Okay, hi, hello everyone, and welcome to the presentation about Castle Game Engine and View VTC. So Castle Game Engine is our general purpose game engine, and View VTC is a 3D model viewer for XVD, GLTF, and actually many other formats. So a uh, general note as we start is that this is like a 15 minute presentation about, I guess, like 15 years of my development life. So at some point I will like want to show you a lot of things and <laughs> it may get fast. And when it, does, when it does, well, remember that everything I show you is like freely available on the internet, both the software and the models and it's all documented. So uh, feel most welcome to check out our website and basically download it and check it out yourself on your own system. Uh, yeah, so Castle Game Engine is an open source game engine suitable for 3D and 2D games. Uh, we support um, a lot of features, a lot of graphic features, and in particular we support a visual editor. So at the beginning I want to actually show you how does the editor, how does the engine look like. So it goes like this. I run the Castle Game Engine editor, I create a new project. Let me choose as a template a 3D model viewer. Uh, let me call it uh, my new project viewer. All right. Now the way uh, the, engine, the way the editor works is that you can design, uh, you can visually design user interface and uh, and also 3D models that you put in your scene. So for example, this thing, well, this is like just a user interface that you can drag around. You can create new mo you can create new buttons as you like, and you can also design the uh, 3D scene underneath. Let me hide this box. All right. So uh, you can also, so this is like the 3D scene underneath that is, show, that, that is being shown by the editor and that will be shown by your game, by, by your tool once you run it. So I can like move things around here, I can rotate things around here and I can of course add new models. So the like basic feature that is that you can compose your scene from many 3D and 2D models. So let me actually add another model here. Mm, let me for example take this one. Okay, and yeah, you have a new model that is placed in the scene. We can arrange the models as we like on the scene. Uh, let me add another one just to show you that the animations here work too. So we go like this. All right. Don't worry about this warning, it basically tells you that the models that I'm loading are outside of the data directory of the project. In a real application, I would like to like package everything that I deliver to the user, well, inside the game data, inside the, inside the data of my application. Okay, so you have three models here, and let me turn on the animation on this one. Yeah, and as you can see, it works. So this is basically actually how the, the engine works. You can design the user interface and everything you'd like in uh, one comfortable editor. Mm, you can also, uh, yeah, you, would, you can also run it. It runs on all the platforms that we support. So the engine actually supports a lot of platforms, which is Windows, Linux, Mac OS, which means desktops, and also Android and iOS, iPhone, which means the mobile, uh, Nintendo Switch, console, and also we have a WebGL port coming in the next year using the Pass to JS. Yeah, so the engine is uh, coded when, when you write your own games and uh, the engine is made itself using the modern Pascal, which is like a very modern language. I like encourage you to try it out even if you've like heard that Pascal is old and so on. Well, basically it's a modern Pascal, which means that it features uh, generics, classes, interfaces, and pretty much everything uh, you want to have a, a larger, far fully functioning uh, games and tools yourself. So, uh, yeah. So, and both the engine and uh, and your own games are done using Pascal, which means that you can pretty much like um, uh, switch between looking at the engine code and looking at your own code. You can profile it all, you can debug it all uh, nicely. Okay, so this is basically how the engine looks like from the developer perscective. Now, let's go to the view VTC. scene. View VTC scene is our model viewer made using the engine. Mm. It allows you to view models and to convert between uh, from various model formats into XVD. And it supports, uh, well, all the formats that Castle Game Engine supports, which is actually quite a lot. As you can see here, we support XVD, GLTF, Spine, uh, some custom animation format, VRML, Colada, and so on and so on. Uh, so yeah, so let's actually see how it works in practice. Okay. So this is like the basic, uh, boring, <laughs> uh, dark window of your 3D scene. Now let's actually try to load here some models. So let me open one GLTF model. No, actually another one. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So this is a GLTF model of a helmet, and if I would like to convert it to XVD, you know, I would use the file menu, which allows me to save the file to an class XVD in classic encoding, or to XVD in XML encoding. And yeah, so this way you can use this uh, viewer to also convert your models from, well, a lot of 3D formats into XVD. Okay, so the next step is that it also, well, in our engine, well, actually everything is rendered using XVD nodes, which means that even if you open some GLTF file or some Spine or Collada file, it's actually internally all converted into a number of XVD nodes. And this is actually the way our conversion process works. So actually your model is actually converted to XVD nodes when you open it. You can just later serialize it to file, but it's already in XVD nodes when you view it. And yeah, and also you can mix models. For example, you can use the XVD inline node to embed a GLTF and you control GLTF from a larger XVD model. And let me actually show you a demo of it. So this is like a skinned animation demo done in GLTF. It's uh, programmer art, so <laughs> sorry that it looks so poor, I guess. But so yes, this is a simple GLTF model. And now what you can do with it is you can actually embed it inside an XVD model using the XVD inline node. And this allows you to use XVD touch sensor and basically all the XVD features to control this GLTF model, this GLTF animation from XVD. So yeah, so we can kind of mix your model formats as you'd like to, uh, because you can use the inline node in XVD to embed other things inside. Okay, mm. so this is like a very short overview of the XVD, uh, oh, sorry, of the view 3D scene. Okay, so let's go on. So we have also an online converter, which is available on our website. It looks like this. And basically it features the same conversion source code as we have in the view for the scene, but now it's available online. So for example, you can convert, you can select some GLTF model of a fish. You can say open, convert to XVD. And yeah, after, after a second, you get the resulting XVD file. And you can open it with an XVD viewer. Here I'm going to actually use view for the scene again. So this is the fish model that was made uh, that, that, that was made by the conversion process. The textures are actually there, but I didn't put them in the conversion process, so I downloaded the model without the textures. Um, okay, so this is like the conversion process available online. Mm, okay, and now let's go to, I guess, the, <laughs> the last and the largest slide, I guess, which is kind of a quick rundown of various features of the engine and of the 3 scene that we support. And here I would like to uh, kind of show you a lot of models uh, with a lot of features. So as I started, actually, well, we have excellent XVD support. It's how the engine is kind of built on top of the XVD nodes. You can actually see at the documentation that we support, well, a lot of XVD components at, uh, well, at a, at, a, at a suitable level to actually make some cool rendering uh, available. Um, yeah, so we, as you saw you, as I already shown you, we also support GLTF with animations, including skinned animation. Uh, let me actually show you some two more example GLTF models. Oh, sorry. So this would be one example of a GLTF model that features some cool scene with outlines. It's done in GLTF. Uh, the model was itself downloaded from the Sketchfab, which is kind of a cool place to well to get kind of uh, kind of impressive 3D models done by well real 3D artists, not by me. <laughs> so they look nice. Uh, so this is one example of a GLTF model. Let me open another one that shows some animations. Okay, so this is a drone model, animated, animated with GLTF, and yeah, you can run the animation in view 3D scene and it works. Uh, okay, so what more do we support? Well, first of all, we support well, uh, we support physical based rendering, which is well something I we've, we've made actually available in the XVD version four specification. So we support physical based rendering using the XVD version four nodes, which means that you can use physically based rendering both in GLTF. It happens automatically in this case, and also with your own XVD models. So you can use physically based rendering without GLTF. Too. They are just normal XVD nodes. In particular, there is the physical material node that replaces the old material node and, well, has the ability to render using the physical based equations. 
Okay, let me actually show you some uh, some helmet that I've already shown you before, just to show you how the textures mix. Okay. So as you can see, like the light, when I move this, when I rotate this helmet, I only have the headlight here, so it's not really as impressive as it could be. But you can, I think you can already see that like the light, it moves along the helmet in an interesting ways. And that's because the helmet has a nice set of textures applied. There are normal maps, uh, there are emission maps, uh, there are metallic roughness uh, maps that make it, well, vary, that make those parameters varying across the surf surface. And well, the end result is that, well, it kind of looks realistic and, I guess, a bit real in the viewer, okay? Uh, yeah, so more features from VFDC. So we support shadows, we actually support shadows using two techniques, shadow maps and shadow volumes. Let me open some examples of it. So first there would be shadow maps, okay? So as you can see, those trees, they cast shadows, okay? It doesn't look very impressive, but it's actually cool because well, uh, all, all, all those things, all those shadows that you see, well, they are dynamic, which means that I can actually go on and I can modify the light source position. And as you can see, it actually, it actually changes how the shadows look like. And here you can see the gizmo of the light source. And as you can see, as I'm moving the light source, the shadows also change. This, so this is like a fully dynamic shadows technique where you can animate your scene, you can animate the lighting and the shadows will follow. Okay, let me open another example of shadow maps. So this shows that you can actually have shadow maps from two light sources uh, working simultaneously. It's basically not a problem for shadow maps. Let me go and let me actually move one light source around. Okay, so as you can see, shadows from this light source, they are moving across the scene. And yeah, that's what should happen. And let me open another demo of shadow maps. It's right here. And the point of this demo here is that, well, not only shadows work, but also as you can, well, not only the shadows, well, the shadows already, you have you already seen that they work. But the point here is that the shadows from the leaves, which are done using the texture with alpha channel, well, they also work. I can actually move closer to them. Oh, sorry. I can move closer to them and let me actually make them a bit sharper. So like this, yeah. So the shadows from the leaves on this tree, they also work, they are rendered correctly. And that's actually cool because, well, inside, well, internally, well, the, the leaves, they are actually just large polygons. So we needed alpha support uh, for sh inside shadow maps to make them work nice. Okay, so this was just a quick demonstration that shadows using shadow maps in our engine in, in, in view of the scene works. Now let me show you another example of shadows using the shadow volumes. So these produce uh, hard shadows and just like shadow maps, they're like fully dynamic. You can move things in the scene around and it all continues to work. Let me open another demo. So this is a demo that you can again move things inside your scene and it all like continues to work. All the shadows are continuous to be cast correctly. And as before, you can also move the light source, light source that is casting shadows here. And as you can see, the shadows follow correctly. Okay, uh, so we have shadows by, actually we have more techniques for them, but the shadow maps and shadow volumes are like two of the most, well, practical solutions to shadow right now. We support also reflections by QMAP, by planar reflections, and actually by some more stuff. Let me open some quick examples of it. So this would be a symbol scene that shows that reflections on this teapot they work and they are done in real time. As you can see, the shadows are also visible in the reflections. So like everything I talk about here and kind of place together <laughs> correctly and I can move things around. And when I move things around, the things in the reflection, they also move correctly. Okay, so this was a simple scene. Mm. Let me open another uh, example of uh, reflections, this time done on a planar, on like on a flat surface. Okay, and I think this will be best visible here. Okay, so for example, when I go here, you can see that there is the there's like a pool. It's a well, very, very like flat <laughs> water surface, but basically it's a reflective. Yeah. So when I move around, this surface reflects what is going on around, and it's all like done automatically. So it's really easy for you to set up those kind of mirrors using XVD nodes in your own scenes. Okay. Uh, so this would be actually about reflections. 
uh, let's go further. So we support also screen space effects, which are also often called like post-processing, which means that you can write shader code in uh, OpenGL shading language to post-process what you display on screen. And this allows you to actually make a lot of cool effects. It's particularly useful for a lot of game effects. Uh, let me actually open quickly some uh, one of our game that uses this extensively. Okay, so this is Escape from the Universe, a game that runs on mobile, on Nintendo Switch, on, and here it runs on PC, on Linux. Okay, let me run the new game. And well, the, uh, the effects, the screen space effects in particular, they occur when you crash with something. So let me actually try to crash with something. Okay, and there we go. So basically it's like a chromatic aberration effect that occurs when you crash with something. And this is like the cool thing that you can do with screen effects. So you post process the screen to give it some kind of color shift or well, actually many other, many other things are possible. So this, was the, this is like the demo of the screen effects. Mm, what's more? We support bump mapping. Actually, you already seen the demo of it a couple of times because a lot of models I've shown here, we are using bump mapping. Mm. So as, a de as another demo of bump mapping, let me actually show you something a bit more impressive because also we support bump mapping, which is called uh, steep parallax bump mapping with self shadowing. And what does it mean? Well, it means that right now what you see here, well, it's a simple, well, the, the wall that you are seeing right now, it's a simple uh, wall composed from two triangles, okay? So just two triangles, nothing more here. And the way it works is that not only it supports, uh, not, not only the bump mapping works, which means that like small features of this uh, wall are visible, but also there is self-shadowing, which means that you can move the light source around and there, is, there are actually small shadows that appear from the, well, small features of this wall. Okay, so you can move the light source around and inspect how those shadows look like. Okay, so this is like bump mapping with steep parallax, uh, steep parallax uh, bump mapping with self shadow. Okay, uh, what more do we support? Well, we support uh, gamma correction uh, following the GLTF specification. You can use gamma correction for everything, including your XVD models. You can use it or you can use it only for the physical materials. It's up to you. So it's like configurable. Basically, gamma correction is a way to apply light in a correct way, but it also changes the look of your scene. So basically, for new projects, you kind of want to use gamma correction on everything. But if you open some old project, some old model, you probably want to keep the gamma, you may want to keep the gamma correction off to keep the old colors well, basically looking as they will. Um, okay, so we also support uh, Spine and Unlit Materials. Spine is a cool 2D animation uh, software and we support it by converting, just like with GLTF, when you load the Spine model, we convert it to XVD nodes. And we render it using unlit materials, which are also another feature of XVD version 4. They will, of course, the unlit material was already possible in XVD version 3, but now it's possible with emissive texture, with emissive color, so it's kind of more configurable. And let me actually show you a game that we've done uh, using, uh, intensively using Spine and cas using Castle Game Engine, of course, that is using this technique to render, well, pretty much everything, to be honest. Okay, so this is Unholy Society. Uh, it's again a game that runs on mobile, desktop, and console, Nintendo Switch. So as I kind of emphasize, the engine runs on many platforms and it's all from one source code. So you just ma make it once and it kind of works everywhere. Okay, let me load the uh, one of the locations of the game where you can kind of walk around and you will see how it looks like. Mm. Oh, and, and remember that, as I told you, like everything you are going to see here is actually uh, it's XVD nodes because everything we kind of uh, load it is it gets converted to a number of XVD nodes under the hood. Okay, so the hero here is uh, so so the animation of the hero, the hero walking here. Well, those are the XVD nodes, XVD interpolator nodes that modify the translation rotation of everything. So everything here is just an XVD animation under the hood internally in the, in the engine, okay? And yeah, from the outside, it's just a cool looking uh, two-dimensional game, okay? So this is some holy society. Um, yeah, what more do I want to show? Yes, yeah, so we have also animation blending. Uh, for this, let me actually open you 
the hero model from the game that I shown you like uh, <laughs> before from the Unholy Society. So we have some uh, we have a panel to control animations inside the view of EDC. So for example, you can choose the idle, you can choose afraid, you can make shocked. Okay, uh, let's try switching between, for example, walking and idle. Okay, so by default, the animation just jumps from idle to walking. But the feature of our engine is that you can make a smooth transition. It's called animation blending or cross-fading of animations uh, from one animation to another. And it's called kind of calculated automatically. You just set one parameter that is called the transition time. Here I set it to 0 0.226 uh, seconds. So it's like one quarter of a second. And this, will, this way the transition from the walking to idle animation, well, it will be smooth as you will be able to see it, like right? So the hero stops or starts walking in a smooth way, not in an abruptly changing between those two animations. And that is actually it. That was, I hope, like a quick rundown of Castle Game Engine and your the scene features. I emphasize, uh, here's the link. <laughs> Go on and try it out yourself and have fun with it. And thank you very much.